We'd like to welcome the uh, radio audience that's tuning in to listen to us. We also want to welcome those watching on Tuesday and Thursday evening. And of course, we want to extend a warm welcome to every single one of you. Thank you for joining us this morning. <clears throat> this morning, we're going to talk about worship, and we're going to give you four myths. Four myths that aren't true. I guess that's what a myth is. That's what the TV show Mythbusters is all about. It's these two guys that walk around, and they just try to show you what's true and what's not true. And today, in order to better understand what worship is, we're going to get rid of four myths so you can have a clearer picture of what it truly is. First myth we want to bust today is worship is all about us. That is what the world would like you to think. Worship is all about us. That is not true. The reality is worship is all about God. Worship is not all about us. Worship is all about God. Worship was never intended to revolve around ourselves. And as much as we try to have it revolve around ourselves, it will not. No more could the sun revolve around the earth because that's not the way it was created, right? The earth is always going to revolve around the sun no matter what it, we do. We as well are meant to revolve around God. The notion that we would ask God to revolve around us and our schedules and what we want worship to look like is absurd when you put it in that same regard. Worship is not about us. Worship is all about God. John chapter 1, verse 3 shares with us, all things were made by God and for God. And when you hear the word all things, I want you to very clearly hear the word worship. God created everything, every idea, every notion, every person, everything. He also created worship. It was made by God, and it was intended to be for God. When you worship God, I ask that you look beyond yourself, your agendas, your preferences, and I ask that you look to bring him joy and pleasure through your worship. In fact, that's not a bad definition of worship right there in itself, that we are to bring joy and pleasure to God. Revelations chapter 4, verse 11, is an awesome verse, and it's going to really clearly show us how powerful worship can be. It's on the screen. It says, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. So that's worship. <clears throat> For you created everything... And it is for your pleasure that they exist and were created. God created everything. And we were created for him. And we were created to give him glory and honor and power. We were created to worship him. So the idea that worship is all about us is so far from the truth. I ask that you leave this room today after worshiping and never consider that option again. Worship is all about who? Amen to that. Our second myth is going to be brought to us by Aaron. Okay, so we've learned that worship isn't about me. It's not about us. Um, but our next myth is that worship uh, only happens one day a week. Um, we walk into our church and we spend an hour or more worshiping. Uh, then we walk out the doors. There are six days that happen in between Sundays, right? So what happens? Do you put your Bible on your nightstand and let it start to collect dust? Well, the problem is that our mentality is that going to church is enough. But God isn't a building. He's not just these walls around us. The reality in our minds should be that worship is not just one day a week, but every day. So imagine if you're married, you're uh, a boyfriend, girlfriend, or you even just a close friend. Um, imagine just, just focusing and spending time on that relationship one day a week. Is that relationship going to grow? Is it going to uh, become stronger? Are you going to put all your trust and your faith in that person? Probably not, because you've just focused one day, and sometimes even just one or two hours in that day, on that person. So if you're not going to do that with your spouse or a friend, why would you choose to focus on your relationship with Christ who's your father, your creator, your leader, for just one day a week. 
In Psalm 34, David says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. Worship should be an all-the-time, consistent endeavor, just as David modeled. Let me give you another example. Uh, Say you go to a buffet. Picture, like, Golden Corral. Um, Does everybody know what that is, Golden Corral? Okay, um, so you go in and you stuff yourself. You eat fried chicken, pizza, pasta, ice cream, cookies, whatever. You sit down at the end and you're always so full, right? You're like, I can't breathe. I can't do anything. And you always say to yourself, I will never eat again. But then the next morning, you wake up and what happens? You're hungry all over again. Exactly. You can't sustain yourself with eating just one day a week. So we're kind of stuck in this all-you-can-eat buffet syndrome. We're missing the point of worship. Spending just one day or an hour can't sustain us through the week. We need an open communication with God. Just as you take delight in food, God takes delight in us, and he wants us to take delight and pleasure in him every day. Um, On your tear-off tab, you'll notice uh, that next up, number two, it says take the 10-day challenge. This week, beginning tomorrow, uh, and for the next 10 days, I want you to challenge yourself to make a habit of worship. And there are a few ways that you can, you can start out doing this. Um, in the morning when you wake up, spend your fir- first 15 minutes with God. Grab your Bible, read through some scriptures, and spend time in prayer. When you're actively seeking God, he loves that. He takes pleasure in that. Um, another thing that you can do is say breath prayers all throughout your day. I ran a mudarella race yesterday. I'm crazy. I don't know why I did it. But anyway, it was 6.2 miles through the mud, through muck, with obstacles and crazy stuff. And you better believe the majority of my time was spent in prayer. Because I was like, you know what, God? You got to get me through this. I'm not going to make it. Please, Lord, be with me. Thank you for all the stuff that's around me, Lord. I mean, I was praying hard. And you know what? I felt close to God, and he pulled me through that. Um, so, so that's another thing you can do throughout the day is just say breath prayers. Um, And then finally, pray at bedtime. When you lay down, close your eyes, reflect on your day, and acknowledge all the ways that God has blessed you. In Romans 12, 1 through 2, it says, So here's what you do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary, your ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Myth number three. Worship is just a part of my life. Just a part. That's definitely not true. The reality is, worship is not just a part of my life, but all of my life. Worship is all of my life. Consider for a moment, how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand unless you want, how many of you have ever set off in life to lose a little weight and said, I wanted to shed a few pounds, and you went ahead and did it, and and maybe it worked. Maybe you you lost whatever your goal was. But you probably found out afterwards that those pounds crept slowly back on over time. So why is it most diets don't work? (laughs) And here's the answer. It's because diets are temporary solutions and your body desires permanent solutions. When you decide to commit to a lifestyle of wellness and health, then your body will reflect what you're hoping to see up here. But if you say, I'm only going to do it for a week, and then hopefully I can coast on the next 10 years on a good-looking body, it's probably not going to work. Same goes for your worship. God did not create you to only worship with part of your life and then expect the remainder of your life to be fulfilled through God. God created you to give him worship all the time. Just like with exercise, if you only do it a little bit, in the long run, it's not going to count. You need to do it as an ongoing way of life, and God wants our worship to be the same way, an ongoing way of life. And when you do that, 
God will love your worship because he will never stop getting your worship. That's how God created worship to be. I want to ask you if you would join me in reading a verse or two or three. First Thessalonians, let's toss it up there. Chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Let's read this together as a church. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you take a look at that piece of scripture, it's talking about giving God a variety of different things that you can give him in your worship. But there's words in those three verses that stand out to me. And the words that stand out to me is always, continually, and in all circumstances. After every one of those different ways that you can worship, there is a consistency put after it that is ongoing. It's not just a part of your life. It's all of your life, and that's how God created worship to be. That's myth number three. Aaron's going to share with us the last one. So our final myth this morning is that worship is a religious activity. Um, let me give you a few differences between uh, religion and Christianity. So religion is man-centered. Christianity is relationship-centered. A religion is a human-centered experience, whereas Christianity is faith and, and spirit-centered experience. The reality is that worship is not about religion, but about a relationship. God yearns for us to come to him with, an off with authentic worship. He says in Isaiah, these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. We oftentimes do things or don't do things because we are told to. We have to say the Lord's Prayer this certain way. We have to sing this song this exact way. Or we don't do things like clapping and lifting our hands because those don't have a place in our church. But this is where God wants you to search for him. He wants you to find out why you're doing certain things or why you're not doing certain things. Author Fritz Reidenauer says, Christianity is more than a religion. Because every religion has one basic characteristic. Its followers are trying to reach God, find God, and please God through their own efforts. Religions reach up toward God. Christianity is God reaching down to man. Christianity claims men have not found God, but that God has found them. To some, this is a crushing blow. They prefer religious effort dealing with God on their own terms. This puts them in control. They feel good about being religious. You see, if acceptance and atonement don't come as a result of how good we are, then how can we know for sure that we're going to be accepted? But the great thing about our faith is that there's only one action in Christianity that must happen, and that's to choose a heartfelt relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus himself tells us that no one can come to the Father except through me. We must let go of our comfortable security of religious routines and recognize that Jesus is the source of our salvation. Having a relationship with Christ is something that happens daily. We have this relationship through worship. Have you started that relationship? Does it happen throughout your week in reading scripture and in prayer? Is it all of your life? Or is it just an activity that you do on Sundays? If you haven't started your relationship, I challenge you to take that step this morning. Or maybe you do have that relationship, but you want to move from acts to authentic. You can do that today. In just a little bit, we're going to be taking communion. But during this next song, I want you to think, I want you to reflect, and I want you to pray and seek what true worship really is.